Good morning, everyone. It's, it's Friday morning in Dallas. We can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. There we go. Howdy. That's right. Actually, so for those of you who are new to the area, uh, howdy y'all works for good morning here. All y'all is the plural of y'all. So howdy to all y'all. Uh, my name is Dr. Benjamin Greenberg. I'm a neurologist here in Dallas at the University of Texas Southwestern. Some of you uh, know me, some of you don't. Some of you get tortured by me in clinic. Some of you haven't had the uh, uh, horrendous experience yet. Uh, it is really a great pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, this symposium, the 2010 Rare Neuroimmunologic Disorder Symposium, has been a long time coming. Uh, Sandy can attest to this. We have had discussions about this now for about 18 months approximately, uh, about a year and a half. This is a meeting that some of you have been to before. Most of you have never. Uh, it has gone on for uh, approximately a decade, starting in Baltimore, hosted by Johns Hopkins University, and happened for the most part every other year. And the idea of the meeting was to bring together a diverse group of individuals who shared uh, something very common. They tended to be the outsiders. They tended to be the individuals with diseases or disorders that they told their family or friend what they had and got the response, what's that? And uh, in this community of rare diseases, there have been a lot of bonds made and there's been a lot of advances made on the care uh, provided um, to patients, to families, and the knowledge that's being gained both by patients, families, physicians, and scientists. This meeting is split simultaneously into two tracks, if you will. In this room, entitled the clinical room, uh, we have a mix of patients, caregivers, physicians, scientists. And in the room next door, entitled Basic Science, we have a mix of patients, caregivers, clinicians, and scientists. You do not have to have a PhD to sit in the next room. What you have to have is an interest in hearing what's being discussed about or an interest in hearing something new. Uh, or you just haven't slept well last night and you need a good time to take a little snooze. I, whatever works for you, you can go back and forth. We encourage you to go back and forth. Do not feel as though you need to stay in this room. Look through the program, look through the agenda, and decide what is right and best for you and what your needs are. We are here to try and serve those needs, and we're going to do it as best we can. And I'm going to try and give you an introduction to how the day is going to work. But we would not be here uh, serving needs, bringing a community together, and hopefully encouraging lively discussion if we didn't have support from uh, key groups. And so I'd like to thank several individuals uh, as well as organizations that really made today possible. And, and I really can't stress this enough. A series of groups came together with unrestricted educational grants, meaning they said, let's help defray some of the cost of putting this together, of bringing between uh, 170 and 200 individuals into the state of Texas, into Dallas for a meeting, bringing 30 physicians and scientists from around the country to sit and talk with individuals for a weekend. They include the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, uh, who with an unrestricted grant has really made a big difference in terms of today happening. And there's been a real recognition on the part of the Multiple Sclerosis Society that in the world of immunologic disorders of the nervous system, there is a big umbrella and they have branched out time and time again to make sure they meet the needs of a variety of patients. Teva Neurosciences, Biogen IDEC, Bayer Pharmaceuticals, the Guthie Jackson Charitable Foundation for Neuromyelitis Optica, Restorative Therapies Incorporated have all stepped up uh, to make today happen. One group in particular has made a big difference for today, the Transverse Myelitis Association, uh, not just through financial support, but also through sweat equity, the work that Sandy Siegel does on a daily basis, the work that Paula does on a ba daily basis. Deb is here somewhere in the room. Jim Lubin, who's not with us today. Uh, the officers of the TMA board who day in and day out try to make sure we're making things better for tomorrow. Included in your syllabus that you have today, there's a list of every speaker's public disclosure. The course in this room is what's called CME certified, continuing medical education. So for our healthcare professionals, you can claim CME credit for today. Uh, there is a form that you fill out at the end, and also we are going to ask everybody to evaluate us. Uh, we want to know how we can get better. And by no means am I talking about the next symposium yet, Sandy, because that, that ain't happening. The other thing is please uh, silence your cell phones and pagers if you can, just so that we can keep things quiet and uh, people's attention uh, on the discussions and the speakers. 
So what should you expect from today and tomorrow and into to Sunday? This is not like a normal conference, uh, and uh, Sandy does his best to encourage everyone to make sure that you should not feel as though uh, the speakers are unapproachable. We set up lunch to try and make sure that everybody mixes, patients, families, clinicians, scientists. We have uh, physicians and scientists here from University of Texas Southwestern, Johns Hopkins University, the Mayo Clinic Scottsdale, Mayo Clinic Rochester, the University of California San Francisco, Stanford, uh, you name it, the list goes on and on. And for a lot of you, you have traveled to multiple clinics around the country to try and get help. Little did you know we were gonna bring everybody to you here for a weekend. This is your chance, this is your opportunity to try and grab what time we can in between talks over lunch in the small group sessions meet these physicians, meet these scientists, and ask them questions. It may be something personal about what's going on with your care. It may be something scientific about the way research is going. But I encourage you, highly encourage you, to take the opportunity to sit and chat uh, both with each other and with the different professionals who are here. And on that note, it's worthwhile uh, to mention that for many people in the room, the symposium in the past has been the first time ever that people have met other individuals with the same disease. And I'll have Sandy come up in a moment and, and share some of his experiences. But when you're in the uh, category of a rare disorder, uh, it is quite comforting at times to sit in a ballroom with 100 of your closest friends and recognize that you're not alone and that the experiences you've had, both good and bad, uh, are shared experiences and that the struggles you and your family face every day are not isolated struggles. Uh, there really is a very vibrant community within the rare neuroimmunologic disorders community uh, to try and bring people together. And the Transverse Myelitis Association, the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation for NMO have been uh, great examples of grassroots organizations that are really trying to bring uh, individuals together. So what are you going to expect today? So today is a crash course in rare neuroimmunologic disorders. So we will be handing out honorary degrees at the end. You're all going to be neurologists and immunologists. You can open a clinic wherever you want. Um, this is really to make sure that everybody in the room is speaking the same language as we transition to some of the discussions about improving symptom management, treatments, research, stem cell discoveries. In order to put all of those topics into context, uh, we all have to have a common language for these different disorders. And so in the morning, you're going to go from an overview with Dr. Bates in a moment just to set the stage. What is the difference between transverse myelitis, neuromyelitis optica, and multiple sclerosis? What is the difference between ADEM and these other diseases? We're going to move on to a primer uh, on immunology. This is usually where people get a little scared. Uh, the idea that there's going to be complex slides and graphs of different pathways uh, and we're not looking to scare you, we're looking to give you some language uh, so we can move in to understanding the different diseases. I encourage you to ask questions. This is not meant to be a purely didactic session, and so there are times um, at breaks and then discussion panels to make sure that you talk to the individuals that are speaking. That said, before going any further, I do want to give uh, Sandy Siegel a moment just to welcome everyone. As I've said, Sandy's been an uh, incredible advocate for not just transverse myelitis patients, but patients with uh, ADEM, optic neuritis, neuromyelitis optica for years. I won't say how many years, but for years. And uh, the work he does day in and day out with his, uh, what he refers to as his other job, uh, really makes a tremendous difference in the lives of uh, enormous numbers of people. As we just discovered, there are some people in this room who have talked to Sandy multiple times on the phone but never had the face-to-face. The -face. So if you're in that crowd, I encourage you to, to come find him. I'd say shake his hand, but he's going to hug you, so don't even try. Um, but I want to give him a, an opportunity just to share some thoughts about symposium, and then we'll, we'll move on with the agenda. So, Sandy? First, I would like to start out by thanking Dr. Greenberg and the folks at the University of Texas Southwestern who have done all the difficult work to put this symposium together. It is really, it takes so much effort to make something like this happen, uh, arranging the program, inviting the physicians, uh, funding the program. I know 
you know, you look at the cost for individuals who to come into uh, Dallas to um, uh, to participate in this symposium, and you look at the cost of registration and the travel, and it does look daunting for people. We understand that. That's why everything that we do in the next two and a half days is going to be videotaped, and the presentations will be posted on our website as streaming video because we know for 7,000 plus people who have these disorders around the world, it's not possible for them to get here. But it is, we work really hard to subsidize down the cost for everyone to make it as uh, easy as possible for people to get here. So however all of you figured out how to do that, I am so happy for you because this weekend is going to change your life. If you've never had the opportunity to uh, be in a room with other people who share the same experiences that you have gone through, this is what this weekend is really all about. Please, you know, some of you, I've already spoken to people over the last, uh, since last night, and I, I can be in a conversation with somebody for about a half a minute and decide this person's pretty shy and they're gonna wait for somebody to come up and talk to them before they are in a conversation with someone. I am going to beg all of you really shy people out there, don't do that. You need to start meeting people immediately. I have so many examples. We, we all, Paula and Pauline and Debbie, we all have all of these examples of people who have met at these meetings and have stayed friends for the rest of their lives. I mean, th this is a really awesome opportunity for you to find people who you can rely on after you leave Dallas. So please, please, please take advantage of that. I also want to reiterate a point that Ben made a couple of times, which is that the doctors who best understand these rare neuroimmunologic disorders are in this building right now. You are, you are not going to find a situation like this until somehow I can convince these guys to do this again, and they don't want to even think about it for months and months and months afterwards. So please take advantage of the fact that these doctors are here. Introduce yourself. Make sure you sit at a table when, where they're having lunch and dinner or breakfast tomorrow morning. Please feel free to, to have those kinds of conversations They've all been involved with our symposia before and they understand what the expectations are. They're going to want to talk to you, so please, please do that. This is really, Pauline and I were talking about this yesterday. This is such a thrill for us because this is the first time in quite a long time that all of the physicians from the Transverse Myelitis Association Medical Advisory Board are together and are all going to be presenting this weekend. And you're going to have an opportunity during my uh, presentation, which is the last presentation of the day, where I talk about the Transverse Myelitis Association story. And, and it is the last presentation of the day, so if it runs a little long, I'm thinking I'm not going to be punished too severely. <laughs> Actually, what, what I told Chitra last night was that there was probably a greater chance of Ben curing transverse myelitis in a half hour than there was of me finishing that presentation in a half hour. <laughs> um, but uh, you will get to meet some of our medical advisory board doctors during that presentation. They have not just, they have changed all of our lives through their involvement in this work, and I hope I can make that communication at my presentation this afternoon. Um, I also want to thank uh, the other officers of the association. Uh, Paula, could you please raise your hand so everybody can see who you are? And Debbie Capen, Debbie, where are you? Over, Debbie, over there. And as 
Ben mentioned, Jim Lubin is not here, unfortunately, but um, these guys do so much work every day. It's not just my home telephone number that's listed on the TMA website. It's also their home telephone numbers that are listed. And um, they, they do so much work. Nobody's compensated for the work. It's all done out of the kindness of their hearts. And uh, we're all just so grateful for all that you guys do. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank all of the physicians who have made it into Dallas for this weekend to make the weekend such an incredible experience for the researchers and for the people in this part of the program. And finally, I, I probably won't have another opportunity to do this, so I want to take advantage of it. I want to thank Pauline for what she allows me to do. It takes a very unusual person to accept that their caregiver is offering care to a few thousand people on a regular basis, 24 hours a day, some who only want to speak to me in Spanish. Um, she's just an incredibly generous person. I, it's amazing how much time and effort I put into the work that I'm doing and what I get from Pauline in doing that work is support. And she's got it going on like the rest of you. She has all of the same issues that the rest of you do. And uh, it just, she's a very, very special person. And thank you for letting me do this. And for the person who is keeping track of the pool, it was 8.48 when Sandy had the first tier, so <laughs> I, I don't know who wins the bet, but um, I pegged them at 25 minutes into the morning. I didn't think it'd get 18, but uh, it won't be the last. Um, so uh, hopefully you have a sense in terms of our, our goals for today and tomorrow and into Sunday. Uh, like I said, we're hoping for this to be very interactive. Um, peppered out throughout the day. Uh, I'll be trying to recognize and thank different people. You'll hear me if you, uh, she's not in the room right now, so now's the right time. If you see Stephanie Taylor around, uh, who's been directing a lot of the infrastructure for today, please go up and uh, shake her hand or give her a hug and say thanks. She's done a lot of work for this. And uh, also for individuals, as an aside, who have decided to take part in the Accelerated Cure Project today, and we'll talk about it in detail later, but you know who you are if you've signed up. Uh, Martha Mann and Stephanie will be coordinating things for you throughout the day. So just uh, look for them if you haven't talked to them already. All right. With all that in mind, it is uh, time to get started with things. Uh, hopefully it will be a, a great morning. We're very lucky today to have a variety of faculty and staff from all over, but a uh, large number of folks from our home institution here in Dallas, the University of Texas Southwestern. My goal for the day, I have one goal. Uh, is for you, two goals, for you guys to have a great time, learn a lot. Goal number two is to keep us on time. Sandy Siegel is the last speaker of the day because I'm counting on all of you to keep him on time. At that point, you will be hungry, tired, <laughs> looking for a beer or beverage of your choice, and Sandy will be all that stands in between you and that <laughs> promised land. So I'm not worried at all. I'm counting on you to keep him on time. For the rest of the day, it's up to me to crack the whip. So if you're a speaker in the room and you see me in the back making gestures or I walk up and just gently tap you on the shoulder and move you off stage, it's to try and keep things going at a, a reasonable pace today. We are officially on time. In fact, we're a little ahead of time, which was our plan because we're going to lose it in about 20 minutes. We'll be behind. Uh, that's just how these things work. 